lightning cracks in this dark and stormy night when the lights begin to flicker and suddenly it was out <laughs> so you make your way to grab a candle from the kitchen but on your way a book falls behind you that's odd you think to yourself but little did you know what began as odd would very soon turn into insanity out the ceilings down the walls blood begins to ooze and drip that is right get out run run there are many ways to build horror <laughs> some that are more commonly used while others that are more abstract or unique to the personal story that you are trying to tell well in this brand new series called Making Horror in RPG Maker, we will be taking a look at both. But for today, we will be taking a look at three common horrors in RPG Maker. Happy Halloween! Lighting is perhaps the most easiest thing you can do. You go into your list of commands, click on tint screen, and select night or dark. But what if I were to tell you that your simple tint of the screen speaks more about your game than you think? For most new developers, they would go with a tint that is dark, but that's the thing. It's just dark. While this will work in certain cases, most of the times it hurts more than creating an atmosphere. Take this scene for example, it doesn't really play much significance to me, it's just dark. And to be honest, all I want to do is find a flashlight or pretty much whatever light source so I can light up and be able to see. Not for the canon of the game, not for the atmosphere, but solely because I just want to see. Now let's try it with a different color tint that also helps to brighten up the screen a bit. Don't you feel a little bit more comfortable? Like yeah, it would be nice to have a flashlight or a lantern or whatever, but to be honest, you can see exactly what's going on around you, and you still get that vibe that it's nighttime. So let's try it again. And again. In my opinion, colors gives a certain emotion or vibe to an atmosphere. The blue gives me a more mysterious, slow pace, and maybe a bit of a creeping feeling. This purple gives me more of an uneasy feeling, and almost as if magic was in play here. Lastly, Red tends to give you a more rushing emotion, so I kind of get this vibe that I want to be out of this place ASAP. I, I want to be in a place where I feel safe, and red is definitely not it. Again, a simple dark tint may very well work for your game, but if you're trying to convey an emotion, a feeling, then try adding a little color to it. And who knows, maybe it'll speak more to the player than just dark. Whether it's books falling off the shelves, I don't have a book. Desk moving on its own. Or chairs. <laughs> moving objects help break tension. And it can also help create foreshadowing. Perhaps there's a poltergeist in your game. Or maybe you just got a, I don't know, a little sibling or an older sibling being a little troll. Either way, here's how it works. Let's use a falling book for example. Conveniently, there are sprites of a closed book and an open book on tile set C. Assuming you're using this tile set of course for your map, we can create the book event here. Now you're probably wondering why it's already on the floor and not on the shelf, but that will be explained later. Also ensure that its conditions are based on a variable, and I decided to call it book, and that its options are set to through and direction fix. We want to copy this page and paste it onto page two, but change the variable condition so that it is equal to or larger than one number larger than your previous page. And also, of course, have the book image open. Now, over where the player walks will be an invisible event that runs on player touch. When the player walks over this event, it will teleport the invisible book up by one so that it looks like it's coming from the bookshelf. 
then we're going to iterate the variable book to one. This will now make the book look visible. Then the book will move down, iterate that variable again so that the book event goes to the next page and make it look opened up by the time it hits the floor. Before we forget, we do want to have a page that will terminate this event from ever playing again. Also, I decided to move the event to a common event so that I don't have to keep copying and pasting each time I need to make an edit between the top and bottom portions of the hallway. Oh, and of course, you probably want to add some sound effects and maybe even some dramatic effects for the player. As an added layer of spice, you can have a dialogue appear when the player interacts with the book. And this is part of the reason why we created the book on the ground first and not up on the bookshelf. It's because when we leave the map, come back, we want to make sure that that book is still on the ground. Go ahead and give it a try for yourself. Oh yeah, and don't forget that we can take what we did previously with lighting and toss it into this map here. Also, I don't know if I told you, but I absolutely hate the RTP for creating horror games. So I decided to create my own assets and check this out. Rather than having a book separated from the bookshelf, I decided to just create a character sheet of the book animating its fall from the bookshelf. So this kind of saves me some extra graphics or some extra steps that you'll see in the event page. And here it is, plain and simple to do this. Not bad, huh? By the way, if you're enjoying the video, hit that like button and give it a subscribe if you see it down there too. Why not? Out the ceiling and down the walls. Watch as blood oozes to the ground. Seriously, how did things get so messed up so fast? Whether it's Photoshop, GIMP, Aceprite, you name it, you will need to create your own custom blood. For reference, RPG Maker MZ and MV's tile sizes are 48 by 48. So use this as a reference for creating your blood. And if you don't quite understand importing character sheets, then be sure to watch this video where I explain everything you need to know about it. So over in Aceprite, I've created blood that will simulate oozing in four frames. Remember that each row is a facing direction and that column one and three are stepping animations because the blood will grow in height on the walls from the ceiling to the ground while eventually stopping, we will animate with facing directions and not with stepping. Heading back into RPG Maker, I can quickly open the game's folder from this menu, make my way over to image, character, and export my image file as PNG there. Back in RPG Maker, I will create the blood on the walls to my choosing and have it trigger on a switch. Similar to the bookshelf, I will have an invisible event in the player's path. When the player steps on it, so brings the blood. <clears throat> the blood. Also, don't forget to add a new page to terminate this event from playing again. Now we head back into the blood event and tell its movement command to turn left, right, and up. But of course, some pauses in between. This will give the effect of oozing. Lastly, we of course need to terminate this oozing blood with a new page and its image of its final path. Yes, that's right. Blood. 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 <coughs> <coughs> mm. Too much blood. <clears throat> Gross. So there you guys have it, three easy and common horror elements in RPG Maker. By the way, if you do want the game file itself, you can head on over to itch.io in the descriptions down below and donate $1 or more. While all the code is in the video, this is my way of saying thank you for supporting both me and the series. In the game file is all of the art that I used to create it and disclaimer, this is all it. To which you can use freely however you like. I really do hope you enjoyed the new video template and if you did, hit that like button and 
Heck, if you have some scenarios or scenes that you can think of, let me know down below in the comments and it may be the very next video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on it and I'll see you in the next one. Name's Yodi. Ladder.